Welcome. We are going to spend just a moment talking about how to make a rosti, or uh, rosti meaning R-O-S-T-I with a umlaut over the O. And uh, this is a dish that you're going to find in the Alpine countries such as Austria and Switzerland and uh, uh, France. And what we do is we take two pounds of potatoes, in this case these are russet potatoes, and we've scrubbed them clean. We're going to boil them in water with a little bit of salt for just a few minutes. We, we want the centers to be just cooked. We don't want them to be mushy because as soon as they cool off, we are going to remove the jackets. We're going to shred the potatoes. So we don't want them to be completely uh, cooked through. And to this shredded potato, we're going to add just a little bit of ground nutmeg. Um, you could, of course, take whole nutmeg and grind it yourself, or you can take a shortcut like I'm going to do right now and uh, use the pre-ground nutmeg. But you just use a little bit. Nutmeg is a very strong spice and you just want a hint of it in your dish. And once we have this all together, we're then going to put it into a cast iron pan and uh, we're going to uh, roast it on the on top of the oven uh, and then flip it over. That's the fun part. So you say a little uh, you know, prayer at that point. So first thing we're going to do is boil these. Okay, so the potatoes have been boiling. We're now going to put them into an ice bath. This is to stop the cooking process. So we don't want them to be creamy. We still want them to be slightly undercooked. So I'm going to peel them right. Use the back side of the knife. Not the sharp side, the dull side. So the potatoes have been, have been boiled, peeled, they are warm to the touch. Um, some people when they make rusty, they insist on putting the peeled potatoes into the refrigerator or leave them out on the counter overnight so they get fully chilled. Um, we find that's really not necessary, but you're welcome to do it that way if you want. And next we're going to shred. So, a couple grindings of ground coarse sea salt and some white pepper. So just a little bit of nutmeg as I said, just a pinch like that. Okay, a little bit more. And now we mix it all together. The nutmeg smells good. Yep. Mm. Well, once it hits the heat in the potato, wow. this is released. Now that this is all mixed, we're going to transfer it into a cast iron frying pan. Um, we added about two tablespoons of oil. In this case, we're using safflower oil. You could use really any kind of oil, as long as it's neutral in flavor. You could also use a clarified butter, if you would like. Last but not least, you don't have to use cast iron. You could use a non-stick pan. You probably, though, will need less oil when you do that. Um, this is more traditional, though, and uh, you have a greater sense of victory if you actually flip it properly. So let's transfer the potato in. But what we do next is important. Flatten it out. And so, just to keep it in perspective, this was two pounds of potatoes. This is a nine inch frying pan. So we flatten. So once it's flat, now you go along the edges and you press down like this. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is not just the aesthetic, okay. how it looks, but it's much easier to get it out of the pan. And also, I'm going to show you a little trick. So, even though the pan is oiled, we're going to add just a little bit of oil around the side. 
And because yes, the yes, and because there's a ridge there, where does it go? It goes down, right underneath. And if you happen to put too much oil in, in other words, you don't want it to pool there, you can always remove some by taking a piece of paper towel and just put it around the edge like this. And it soaks it right up. Okay? Mm. So this is what the rusty looks like before it goes on the stove top, which it's going to do right now. So the rusty, you can see the level of the flame. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit to here. You can also see the rusty, it's flat on the top and it's got the ridge all the way around and we're going to let it start. Now, I wish I could say that there is an exact time to flip it. What you have to do is you have to rely on your nose and your ears. When it starts to smell like fried potatoes, you're close. When it's really sizzling like fried potatoes, you're even closer. And last but not least, we can take a small spatula and just look underneath. If it's properly browned, then we know we're definitely ready to turn it. Okay, so let's, let's let this go for a couple minutes to see what happens. Probably gonna be about 10 to 12 minutes before we turn. Okay, so this has been cooking away here for uh, about 10 minutes. We're now gonna have a look. It smells like cooking potatoes. It sounds like cooking potatoes. I can smell it. Yeah. You want to go around the edge. Here's the deal. You're going to flip it onto a flat surface, not just another plate. If I had another pan exactly the same size, I would just turn it into that. But since we have uh, pans of different sizes, that's not going to work. So this is going to go right onto a cutting board. Ready? Beautiful. Voila. Okay. Good job. Now, it cooked for about 10 minutes the first time. We're going to let this run for about half that, so five minutes. Mm -hmm. And it should be more than ready. Okay? Mm 